Okay, guys, so today we are going to start a new book club activity for the primary uh, residents, uh, starting with the anatomy of our diagnostic imaging, the Ryan anatomy book. Uh, the first thing we are, we're going to present is the radiologic anatomy of the chest and will be presented by your colleague, Dr. Shirin. Club. Uh, today's presentation is about the radiological anatomy of the chest. Uh, the chest is derived from a Greek word, uh, the cuirass, that's literally meaning the thorax or the breast plates. It's that part of the human body that's located between the neck and abdomen. It is well protected by the bony skeleton of the thoracic cage. The thoracic cage is a conical enclosure of the lungs and heart. It has a broad base that's limited by the diaphragm. It has a narrower superior apex that is limited by the suprapleural membrane. It is bounded anteriorly by the sternum. In both sides, we have uh, 12 pairs of ribs. Posteriorly, we have 12 thoracic vertebrae. In addition, that it provides the attachment for the pectoral girdle and the upper limb. The thoracic cage is rhythmically expanded uh, by the respiratory muscles in order to let the air in and out during the process of respiration. So we will discuss the ribs uh, first. Uh, the ribs are 12 pairs of ribs. Uh, an individual may have an 11 pair as an anatomical variation. Uh, the ribs um, protect the thoracic organ, most of the liver, spleen and to some extent both kidneys. The first rib is known as an atypical rib as it is the shortest, flattest and most curved rib. It has a head that articulate with T1 only. It has only one articular process. It has a neck and a tubercle, two grooves that's anteriorly for the uh, subclavian artery and vein and another groove that marks for the uh, brachial plexus nerve. Uh, the second rib is less curved and as uh, twice as long as the first rib. It has a tubercle on its external surface for the attachment of the second head of the uh, scalenus anterior muscle. The tenth rib is also an atypical rib as it has one articular facet on its head. The eleventh and twelfth rib, in addition, they have uh, no articulation for the uh, transverse process. The typical ribs are the second to the seventh rib. They are typical as they have head, neck, tubercle, and shaft. In the head, we have two articular facets for the articulation with the vertebral bodies. And in the neck, there is an articular uh, facet that articulating uh, with the uh, transverse process above and on the tubercle, there is an articular facet articulating with the, uh, its own transverse process, and there is a non-articular surface for the attachment of the ligaments. The, uh, also, it has an angle uh, and shaft that uh, mark that uh, in which there is a costal groove that uh, lodge the uh, intercostal uh, vessels and nerves. The costal cartilage are the unossified anterior ends of the ribs. They slope upward to the sternum, where they form synovial sternochondral joint, except the first one, which is a primary cartilaginous joint. The costal cartilage of the first to the seventh ribs articulate with the sternum. Eighth to tenth ribs articulate with the costal cartilage of the ribs above. Eleventh and pair uh, are uh, floating. Uh, they have pointed ends and the uh, muscles of the abdominal wall. The muscles of the thoracic cage are uh, grouped into external, internal, and innermost. A uh, most important point here is that the neurovascular bundle lies between the internal and the innermost uh, muscle layers. The arterial supply of the thoracic cage, we have uh, anterior and posterior group. In the anterior group, we have the upper six spaces that are supplied by the internal thoracic artery, which is a branch of the subclavian artery. The next three are 
power supply by the musculophrenic artery, which is a continuation of the internal thoracic artery. The lower two uh, intercostal spaces uh, have no arterial supply. Posteriorly, uh, the upper two spaces are supplied by the superior internal intercostal artery, that's a branch of the costal cervical trunk of the subclavian artery. The lower line are supplied by the uh, thoracic aorta. The venous uh, drainage of the intercostal spaces, anteriorly, they accompany the arteries to the internal thoracic and the uh, musculophrenic uh, artery, uh, sorry, vein. The posteriorly, the intercostal spaces uh, drain the first one to the brachycephalic vein, the fourth to the, uh, uh, the second to the fourth, they drain to the superior intercostal uh, vein. In the right side, they drain to the azygous. On the left, they drain to the brachycephalic vein. The right fifth to eleventh, they drain to the uh, azygous vein. The left fifth to eighth, they drain to the accessory hemiazygous vein. And the uh, left ninth to eleventh, they uh, drain to the hemiazygous vein. Uh, ossification of the ribs starts at the angle uh, at eight feet tall week uh, during intrauterine life. Secondary centers occur at the age of 50 at the head and tubercle. The fusion occurs at 25 years of age. The radiological features of the thoracic cage on a PHS X-ray, we can see the subcostal uh, group as a fine uh, line below the rib. Uh, prominence is often seen on the second rib, as we said that it's uh, the uh, attachment for the uh, second head of the anterior uh, scalenus muscle. Uh, the costal cartilage may calcify in the male, uh, uh, in the marginal bands in females, it has a central tongue. In addition, the ribs may fuse or bifurcate, they may be splayed or hypoplastic as an uh, anatomical variation. And this variation is commoner in the upper ribs, especially the first one. Uh, the cervical uh, ribs is another anatomical variation that is uh, seen as uh, bony or fibrous band between C7 and the first rib. It's found in 1-2% to 2 of the population, in 50% of which are bilateral and uh, often they are uh, symmetrical. Asymmetrical. Uh, sorry, asymmetrical. Uh, the sternum, or what's known as the uh, breastbone, uh, it has a manubarium that's opposite to T3 and T4 and articulating with the clavicle and one and a half costal cartilage. The second part is the sternal angle that's opposite to T4, T5 disc space and it's a cartilaginous joint, the uh, manubarium sternal joints located here. The body that opposite to T5, T9, made up of four stenbrae that articulate with five and a half costal cartilage. The distal part of the uh, sternum is the xiphoid process that may remain cartilaginous uh, well into adult life. Uh, the joints, we have the manubarium sternal joint between the manubarium and the uh, body of the uh, sternum. And we have the xiphysternal joint between the body and the xiphoid process. Both of them are cartilaginous joints. Uh, the ossification of the centers uh, start at the manubarium and stenbrae uh, above downward from the fifth to the ninth fetal month. After that, uh, the ossification uh, starts below upward from 15 to 25 years of age. The xiphoid process fuses with the body at 40 years of age and the body and manubarium uh, fuse in old age, if at all. The radiological feature of the uh, sternum, uh, on a plain film, it may uh, resemble the uh, mediastinal widening. Uh, therefore, it's better seen on an oblique or a lateral uh, view. Here, as we see uh, the uh, parts, uh, the uh, manubarium, the body, and the uh, xiphoid process. In addition, it may have anatomical variation, like there may be a depression in the uh, lower end uh, that's uh, known as the pictus excavatum, or there may be a prominence in the uh, mid point known as the pictus uh, carinatum. On CT, uh, the body of the sternum is usually perpendicular to the beam and well uh, demarcated. Uh, as MRI, uh, it's the optimal method to uh, visualize the sternum.
uh, diaphragm is that uh, thin uh, muscular uh, structure that forms the uh, highly convex floor of the thoracic cage. It has vertebral, costal, and sternal origins, uh, and as well as the st uh, central tendon. Here uh, we have the right cross that's originating from the uh, body and the disc of L1, 2, 3. So it is longer than the left cross that's originating from the uh, body and disc of L1 and L2. Uh, we have the uh, uh, arcuate uh, ligament that also forming parts of the vertebral uh, origin. We have the uh, lateral, medial and median arcuate ligament. The lateral is the um, a thickening of the uh, quadratus lumborum muscle, while the um, uh, medial Fish. Quadratus lumborum tension thickening. Yes. Okay. So. And the other one uh, of the uh, psoas muscle, the uh, medial one. While the median arcuate uh, ligament that's located between the right and the left cross, it's a uh, uh, fibrous uh, collection between uh, the two part and uh, behind which the uh, aorta passes. We have the costal part of the diaphragm, which arises in slips from the lower six costal cartilage. And we have the sternal parts that originating uh, from the uh, muscles of the posterior surface of the zephy sternum uh, in two slips. Uh, and the uh, central tendon. Uh, the central tendon is uh, actually not central, but it's uh, nearer to the sternum and its mid uh, part is fused with the pericardium and its right and left posterior parts extend toward the paravertebral gutters uh, here the paravertebral gutters <laughs> uh, the main openings uh, of the diaphragm are the aortic uh, uh, one uh, that is uh, located at the level of the uh, T12 that uh, traversing the thoracic duct and as I guess uh, vein in addition to the aorta but as we said the aorta passes behind the median arcuate uh, ligament. Uh, the second main opening is the esophageal hiatus that's located at the level of T10. It uh, transmits the esophagus, the vagal trunk, branch of the left uh, gastric vessels and lymphatics. Then we have the caval opening that located at the level of T8, it transmits the inferior uh, vena cava and the right phrenic nerve. Behind uh, the uh, median arcuate ligament, the sympathetic trunk passes. Behind the lateral arcuate ligament, the subcostal nerves and vessel passes. Between the sternal and costal origin, the superior epigastric vessels pass. Uh, structures that piracing the diaphragm are the terminal branch of the left phrenic uh, nerve that pyrus the central tendon. We have the greater, lesser, and least splanking nerve piracing each cross, and uh, the lymph vessels between the abdomen and the uh, thoracic cavity, uh, most commonly in posterior surface. The radiological features of the diaphragm. On a PHS radiograph, the highest point of the right dome is at the level of the uh, sixth intercostal space anteriorly, uh, ranging from fourth to seventh, uh, yani according to the uh, respiratory uh, process. The right dome is higher than the left by 2 cm. Uh, on a lateral uh, chest x-ray, uh, the following anatomical details help to identify the domes of the diaphragm. That's the uh, hard shadow obliterates part of the left dome, the inferior vena cava may be seen piercing the right dome in addition to the air within the gastric fundus uh, that lies under the left dome. On ultrasound, uh, the um, uh, diaphragm is seen as an echogenic line outlining the upper surface of uh, the uh, liver or uh, the uh, spleen uh, that can be used these two organs as an acoustic window. Uh, on the CT, um, it, the diaphragm is not uh, usually visible uh, as a district structure from the liver or other abdominal organ unless there is a lot of fat on its abdominal surface. Um, here, uh, the important to know the retrochoral space that contains the fat as I guess and hemi as I guess vein, uh, in addition to the thoracic duct and lymph nodes, and uh, here uh, its diameter should not exceed six millimeter wide. Uh, on 
MRI uh, diaphragm is seen as an intermediate signal uh, intensity in the uh, coronal and sagittal planes. The blood supply to the diaphragm is to, by the inferior uh, phrenic arteries that are supplying its abdominal surface as well as the intercostal arteries that are supplying uh, the costal origin. The nerve supply to the diaphragm uh, are the motor and the sensory impulses. The motor supply is uh, from the right and left phrenic nerve from C3 and uh, two C5 roots. The sensory impulses to the central part pass with the phrenic nerve from the peripheral part with the intercostal nerves. The pleura uh, is a serous membrane that covers the lungs and lines the uh, thoracic cavity and the mediastinum. Thus, we have the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. Uh, parts of the pleura are named according to the side. For example, we have, uh, we have costal, we have diaphragmatic, we have mediastinal and uh, apical uh, the, uh, pleura. Uh, the visceral and the parietal pleura are continuous with each other, uh, but below the hilum, the two layers hang down in a loose fold called the pulmonary ligament. Pulmonary ligament may be attached to the diaphragm or may be uh, freely floating. The uh, visceral pleura extends into the interlobar and accessory fissures, the parietal pleura extend deeper into the costophrenic and uh, costomediastinal recess at rest. Uh, the parietal pleura is supplied by the systemic vessels, while the visceral pleura receives arterial supply from both bronchial and pulmonary circulation. Uh, the radiological features of the pleura on a chest x-ray, uh, the pleura can be seen at the site of fissures and sites where the uh, parietal pleura lies on extra pleural fat that's below the second rib and extending vertically upwards from the costophrenic recess. And in addition to the uh, junction lines, um, I thought I have a picture. The anterior junction line is seen as a, a radio um, opaque uh, density when the, the both uh, lungs come into close opposition uh, and the posterior uh, junction line is seen in also in an IP view in which the uh, both lungs come in close opposition posteriorly. And uh, that's seen because uh, th there will be four layers of pleura. Can you show it on the chest X-ray in the diaphragm? No, the diaphragm, the picture okay. of the diaphragm, go back. On the PHS X ray, you need to see the anterior junction line and posterior junction line. By the way, they are not visible in all patients. Yes, not Usually visible. On. Yes. Okay. Can you show it here? Uh, well, it's not very clear. It's not very really clear, but here the paratracheal yeah. strip, I yeah. cannot that see the anterior junction line. Right. I have another picture, I will oh. show it to you. Don't worry. Uh, on axial uh, CT, the pleura cannot usually be distinguished from the thoracic wall or mediastinum unless it is thickened. The pulmonary ligaments can occasionally be seen extending below the inferior pulmonary vein, caudally and posteriorly to the diaphragm. The right pulmonary ligament lies close to the inferior vena cava, while the left pulmonary ligament lies close to the esophagus. The trachea. Uh, it begins at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage or at the level of the C6 vertebrae. It extends uh, to the carina at the level of the sternal uh, angle, uh, T5, that's to say uh, T4 on inspiration and T6 on expiration. The trachea is uh, 15 uh, cm long and 2 cm in diameter and is made up of 15 to 20 incomplete rings of cartilage that are bridged posteriorly by the tracheales, posteri uh, tracheales muscle. The arterial supply to the upper trachea is by the inferior thyroid artery. The lower part is supplied by the branch of the bronchial artery. The venous drainage is to the inferior uh, thyroid uh, venous plexus. The relations uh, to the trachea, as you know, the trachea uh, passes through the, uh, the cervical, and it has a cervical and the thoracic portion, so the relations according to its position on the cervical portion, anteriorly, uh, there is isthmus of the thyroid uh, that's anterior to the second, third, and fourth rings. 
inferior thyroid veins and strap muscles. Posteriorly, there is esophagus and recurrent laryngeal nerves. Laterally, uh, both lobes of thyroid gland as well as the common carotid artery. In the thoracic portion, the uh, relations are anteriorly the brachiocephalic and left common carotid arteries and uh, left brachiocephalic vein. Posteriorly uh, lies the esophagus and left recurrent laryngeal nerve. In the left lateral uh, arch of aorta and left common carotid and left uh, subclavian arteries seen. In the right lateral uh, surface, there is right brachiocephalic artery, right vagus nerve, and arch of the azygous vein. Uh, so, um, the, uh, going to the uh, main bronchi, uh, first we have the carina, that's an anterior posterior ridge at the junction of the main bronchi. It lies at T5 vertebral level, uh, that's to say at the level of the sternal angle. And the carinal angle measure approximately 65 degree, 20 degree to the right and uh, of the midline and 40 degree to the left of the midline. This angle is slightly uh, larger in children. Uh, the right uh, main bronchus is uh, 25 millimeter long and 15 millimeter wide. It is wider, shorter, and more vertical than the left main uh, bronchus. Uh, the main relations of the right main bronchus anteriorly is the superior vena cava and right pulmonary artery. Uh, superiorly lies the arch of the azygous vein. Posteriorly is the azygous vein. Uh, the left main bronchus is uh, 5 cm long and 12 mm in diameter. It is uh, uh, the relations uh, to the uh, left main bronchus are anteriorly the pulmonary trunk. Posteriorly is the esophagus descending aorta, and superiorly uh, there is arch of uh, aortic arch and the pulmonary artery. Uh, the bronchopulmonary segment, um, each lobe of the uh, lung is divided into several bronchopulmonary segments, each of which is supplied by a segmental bronchus, artery, and vein. That's to say, they are anatomical, functional, and surgical units of the lungs. Each segment takes its title from that of its supplying bronchus, so it is a, an independent respiratory unit. Uh, there is little connection between the uh, segment except the pores of con and the canals of the Lambert. Um, this picture uh, showing the uh, bronchopulmonary segments of uh, both uh, lungs. Here um, in the upper right upper lobe, uh, it, ha it has the apical, the anterior, and the uh, posterior segment. In the middle lobe, there is medial and lateral segment. In the lower lobe uh, of the right lung, uh, we have apical, anterior basal, lateral basal, and the posterior basal. The left uh, lung uh, also has bronchopulmonary segments that are uh, in the upper lobe. We have the apical, posterior, and uh, anterior. Um, the lingular uh, that's corresponding to the middle lobe of the uh, right uh, lung are the inferior lingular and the superior lingular. The lower lobe of the left lung are uh, divided into the apical, anterior basal, lateral basal, and posterior basal uh, segment. But the medial basal is not seen there. Yes. This the is the anterior the and posterior view of the uh, segment. The lungs. Um, uh, we have two uh, lungs. Uh, the right lung has three lobes and the left has uh, two with the lingula of the left upper lobe corresponding to the uh, right middle lobe. Uh, within the uh, lung there are interlobar uh, fissures uh, of which we have main fissures and accessory fissure. The main fissure uh, in the right lung are oblique and horizontal fissure. In the left lung just the oblique fissure. The uh, accessory fissure is the azygous superior accessory, inferior accessory, and the left transverse fissures. Uh, the oblique or the major uh, fissure, it is similar in both uh, right and uh, left uh, lungs. It extends from T4, T5 posteriorly to the diaphragm and T2 inferiorly. Uh, the left major fissure is more vertically orientated than the right and the medial aspect of each fissure passes through the hilum. Uh, 
The lateral aspect of uh, each fissure is anterior to the medial aspect uh, at the level of the hyla and below. Above the hyla, the relationship change and the lateral aspect of the fissure is more posterior than the medial. The minor fissure separates the upper and the middle lobes of the right lung. They run horizontally from the hilum to the anterior and lateral surfaces of the right lung at the level of the fourth uh, costal cartilage. Uh, in its posterior uh, aspect, in the uh, right oblique fissure, uh, it meets the, uh, uh, mid, uh, in the mid-axillary line can be seen at the level of the sixth uh, rib. Uh, this is anatomically complete in only one-third of the uh, subject. I mean, it's absent in 10%. Um, this is a PHS X-ray that uh, showing the horizontal and the oblique fissure. And this is lateral view that uh, showing the left major fissure and the right major fissure and the minor fissure. Uh, the accessory fissure, we have the azygous fissure that uh, we have all seen in the reporting. Uh, that is seen as a, a tear shaped radio uh, opaque uh, shadow uh, as a downward invagination from the apical surface of the uh, right uh, upper lobe of the right lung, it is seen in about 1% um, uh, uh, of the general population and uh, because it has four layers of the pleura. The superior accessory fissure, it separates the apical segment of the right lower lobe from the other basal segments. It's seen in about 5% of the PHS radiograph. The inferior accessory fissure separates the medial basal from other right uh, lower lobes a segment that called a uh, twinning line. It is seen in only 8% of the chest x-ray. Left transverse fissure is found in about 2% of the chest radiograph. The blood supply to the lung is via the bronchial uh, artery that are branches of the thoracic aorta. The venous drainage is uh, in the right side to the azygous, in the left to the uh, hemiazygous system. The pulmonary artery As you like. Okay, continue later. Okay. Very good. Excellent. We will continue on the next uh, meeting, inshallah.